Hello YouTube and welcome to part 2 of this review of a gaming laptop called uh, Hansong EX54 LV.66, also known as Clavo 651 SG. Very complex name, but a pretty awesome laptop that I managed to find here in Korea. Now today I'm going to show you the inside of the laptop, talk a little bit more about the uh, some of the downsides and also some of the upsides of this laptop, and then we'll, we're gonna do benchmarks and run a few games and see how it does. So let's actually start with the inside. So let me just show you what the insides look like. So right here, I just opened it up. This is actually one of the things that I kind of was disappointed with, it was the amount of screws. There's actually one, two, three, Something like 13 screws, no, 14 screws. And the biggest downside for me was this, this sticker right here. This sticker right here basically says in Korean that if you remove the sticker, you, your warranty is void. Now that is a huge disappointment right there because all Clevel laptops are meant to be opened up. And this is a Clevel laptop and it's supposed to be opened up. So anyway, they obviously don't want you to open this, but you know what? Too bad. This The whole point of me buying this laptop was so I can upgrade it later on. Anyway, so let's open this up. And this is basically what the inside looks like. Now I'm going to go through some of the parts here that I do enjoy and some of the parts that were a little bit disappointing. First and foremost, let's look at this part right here. Now this thing with double fans and the huge copper uh, heat sink is obviously the video card. Now it's very nicely located, blowing all of your heat in the back of your laptop, which is actually excellent because some of the laptops decided to put this on the right side and it usually blows into your right hand or some of the laptops will do the same to your left hand. So if you're lefty, you'll be suffering the heat from your video card. In this case, it's always blowing to the back of the laptop. So you do have to have some space there and you want to actually lift the back part so that it actually uh, takes some more air in and then blows out the hot air. And so basically this is one of the better locations for a video card and it has two fans, two mega fans that are super, super fast. So far, every time I play the game, it never went above 70 degrees Celsius, which is really impressive. Then on this side here, we have another copper heatsink uh, and also another fan. This is for your CPU, which is right here. It's actually really tiny. You can't really see it, uh, but CPU is right there and right next to it, we have two sticks of RAM. There's actually two more that you can fit on the other side if you raise uh, this part, this motherboard. And uh, it's also very surprisingly easy to change the keyboard on this particular laptop. So there's uh, some of the really nice advantages. Then we have um, this black part right here. And this is actually a battery. And the, so the battery on this laptop is inside the laptop. If you want to replace your battery, you have to open up the laptop. Now that is um, something that I'm not sure I, I agree with because that means that you have to either void your warranty and, or go to a specific service center to have them open it up for you. I don't really agree with that. The battery should be changed whenever you need to change it. So that's not something that they should have done. Then we have our hard drive right here with a hard drive bay. And there's actually, you'll notice there's some space here between them. Now this space is unique to certain models, specifically my computer, because it does have a, a slightly thicker thickness. And basically this is because of the video card. Video card is needed some more space. And if you do have this, you can actually fit two uh, two hard drives, two 2.5 inch hard drives or SSD drive in here. Specifically, it has to be like seven millimeters, I think, which is why I bought this little part right here. This is actually a, a mini SATA or M SATA to 2.5 inch converter. So if you open it up inside this, you'll find this little ch microchip thing. And this is where your M SATA goes. And then you basically plug in this part in here. And this is actually awesome because I can now fit in my M SATA drive that I had on my old computer and then plug it in here and it's going to be fit very, very, very nicely. So it's actually a perfect part to use in this laptop because I um, I made a mistake a few years ago to uh, of buying a very, very expensive M SATA drive, which is now obsolete. No laptop ever uses M SATA anymore. They basically scammed us by making us buy them. And now it's all M.2. And I believe this is it right here, actually. M.2 uh, hard drive is this little part right here. This is an SSD drive uh, with, in this case, 128 capacity, 128 gigs, and then you can go up to 500 gigs as well. But they were actually really expensive because they're, they're so tiny. Now, what I'm not actually sure about is what is this purple thing is. Now, this is actually, I think this is some sort of a, um, some sort of a clay or putty maybe because I've never seen this before. This is some, something they put in there so that this part doesn't wiggle and stays in one place. And the other disappointment, and I guess this is my concern for the company itself or Hansong, is that if you look closer, you'll notice, you look closer, you'll notice that they actually decided to use sticky tape in some 
cases. Now this is actually scotch tape, I believe. There's scotch tape right here. There's scotch tape right here holding these cables for the fan. And there's also a little bit of scotch tape right here holding the uh, little cable for the video card. Now, why they did that, I don't know. My guess is that so it doesn't actually create extra vibration and extra noise when, when everything is operating. But the thing is, if you use scotch tape inside um, a hot environment, it eventually becomes really brittle and the glue can actually, you know, start melting and cause all sorts of trouble. So I may have to replace this later on with electrical tape, which, which they should have used. I mean, this is a little bit unprofessional on their part that they decided to use scotch tape in such an expensive laptop. This is something I may actually bring up with the, with the services later on because that's, especially here, and you can see it's actually, it's, uh, it sort of reflects light here. This is a little bit unprofessional. It's right next to the video card and the video card gets really hot. So this part may actually be in trouble if, uh, with time. But other than that, this is actually a pretty awesome laptop. I'm actually really impressed with what Clevo have achieved here. The design and the layout is absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, they have a video card that blows air in, in, in the back. Then there's a, uh, a CPU that usually blows back in the, in the back right here. So they're actually very, quite separated from each other. So there's some space between them. So nothing really gets hot. So far, my system did not get very hot at all. Uh, and usually the part that really heats up in this particular series of laptops is the CPU. The CPU is the, the, the hot master right here and for this laptop because there's so much space it's actually it's actually so far not uh not really heating up that much the highest temperature i've had so far was like 75 to 80 degrees celsius which is actually relatively low for for i4 uh, sorry for i7 um cpus now all in all i'm really happy with this so far so i'm actually going to later on install my ssd here and show you how i'm going to do this as well because uh this is something that many of you will probably have uh, concern with as well, especially if you bought a, a laptop that had MSATA and you want to keep it and basically include this into your, um, into your computer, into your laptop so that you can increase the storage space. There's so much space here. There's actually enough space to even uh, fit another, uh, one terabyte or even a two terabyte hard drive if you can find it in a, sl a slightly slimmer seven millimeter version. Anywho, let's close this up and take this for a benchmark run. And for the benchmark, I decided to do a few things. Actually, the first thing I did was use Sysoft Sandra, which is actually a somewhat old uh, benchmark processing tool. And what this does is usually pushes uh, your your hardware to the extreme. So here, what I found out is that my current processor is about 25% faster than my old processor that I used to have, which was 30, 3630QM. Um, it this current processor can process at 106 uh, giga OPS, whatever that that means. I forgot what it actually means, but here's the actual score, overall score. So aggregated score, uh, total score is I believe 19. It says right here 19 uh, point 29 kilo points or thousand points, and specifically this c compares to some of the more powerful. Uh, gaming computers that you can currently buy and so let's just uh, I'm gonna scroll down here and just to show you some of the things so the uh, processor multimedia speed is 211.2 megapixels per second this is from the CPU itself then uh, there's a cryptographic speed of 6.4 giga gigabits per second the processor's, processor's financial analysis is 14.11 kilo uh, per second and we have scientific analysis, 15.3 gigaflops, gigaflops. And, uh, and I'm just going to scroll through these results so you can basically check them out by yourself. A lot of these don't really make much sense to me. They might make more sense to you. I am also going to try to run a PC mark later on because this one, uh, the PC mark usually takes a few hours to run. So I just didn't have a chance to do it yet. And I did run 3D marks. So I'll show you the 3D mark score in a second. And here we go. So this is basically the overall score. So this number is relatively high. I think I saw uh, someone's Alienware from last year to have only about 6,000. This one has 19.3 thousand. Uh, so it's it's almost like three times more powerful. So that's uh, Sysoft Sandra scores. Now let's take a look at the 3D Mark. Oh, and before we look at 3D Mark, I just wanted to show you something. Now, specifically this. This is a hardware monitor that monitors the temperatures. And if you look right here, this is the highest temperature reached. Now, these are some toasty temperatures, but the thing is, this is the highest temperature for the CPU. And the the software I was using was really pushing it to the extreme. At some point, my CPU was functioning at 100% efficiency. 
and usually, I mean, it can go to up to 100 Celsius. Uh, but the average temperature, which is right here, was at, at around 78 to 80 degrees Celsius, which is actually really low. Uh, the uh, even after 3D Mark and after all the tests, my video card, however, never reached over 70 degrees Celsius, which is ridiculously low. This is the max temperature I've uh, I've had, and this, I've never seen it so low. It means that I can actually possibly even overclock this to get even higher results for for graphics. Now, 3D Mark score. I used Fire Strike, which is usually for gaming lap uh, gaming computers, not laptops. There, uh, what you usually use for gaming laptops is uh, Cloud Strike, but I decided to push my system to limit and fire strike score this is actually relatively low for this card uh, 8213 and if you look at the analysis it's really because of the combined score for some reason the combined score here is only 3500 now i'm not sure what happened there because it should have been higher the graphics score is 9700 and physics score is 9000 that's just for from cpu and graphics score combined score should usually be higher than that uh, so I can probably push this, and I've seen this being pushed to about 9,500, even possibly more, maybe even 10,000. And this is actually equivalent to, you know, a, a gaming computer that you can currently buy with possibly uh, 970 GTX. Uh, not, probably not as powerful, actually. Nine, nine, 965 for sure, um, or like something like 880 GTX um, uh, NVIDIA card. So this is really, really high. Now, Obviously, this these numbers may not mean much uh, unless you take a look at games. So let's actually run a few benchmarks using games. So I'm going to take a look at a few games here. Now, the first benchmark we're going to run in terms of gaming is Tomb Raider. This is the most uh, popular game to use as a benchmark because it does have benchmark right here. So I'm just going to show you the options. All of the uh, graphics are set to the ultra. So this is the highest possible uh, settings you can have. I even had to, let me just try to zoom in here. Now, the reason why I'm using my camera and not recording this using a recording software is just to show you uh, the highest possible results. So anyway, so these are the highest possible graphics. So right here, I don't know if you can see, but it's Ultra, and the Tropic is 16x. Uh, we have Tress FX on, uh, I think, can you get it to four? Oh, here we go, 4x, SSIE, and this can be, oh, this cannot get higher. Everything else is on Ultra. All right, so let's apply this and run the benchmark so this is the benchmark and right there in the right top right corner you can see the frame rate uh, so this is basically on ultra 1080p and we're getting double digits i guess mid double digits it's getting to 30 fps um, so this would be once again comparable to a modern non-gaming uh, sorry uh, gaming non-laptop so like a, a, an actual pc for gaming laptops, that's ridiculously high because this is this game is actually on ultra settings. It is quite demanding. This is quite a demanding game. It uses some of the um, really awesome modern video uh, graphics technologies, and you can see we're getting to like almost 50 now. Uh, is it gonna get hit 50? Possibly anytime. Well, 49 is good enough. Anyway, so this is Tomb Raider. Let's go to the next game. Another game known for its demanding graphics and awesome benchmarks is Hitman Absolution. So everything here is on Ultra, as you can see. I actually, no, I cannot increase Bloom anymore. Yeah, only goes to normal. Uh, and let's run the benchmarks. It's our benchmark right here, and let's see what we get in terms of frame rates. And once again, I'm sorry for using the camera, but there's really no better a way of doing benchmarks unless you can actually not use recording software because otherwise the frame uh, frame rates per second would actually decrease so let's see what this does and all right so this is the benchmark for uh hitman absolution here this is one of the more demanding areas in chinatown and we're getting once again around the same mid mid double digits just over 30 frames per second this time it was at 40 before, now it's at 35, 36, 30 something, 37. And this is probably the most demanding um, area in the entire game. So if you get double, high double digits in this area, you'll get over 60 frames per second everywhere else. All right, so this is Chinatown from Hitman Absolution. And the next game we're going to take a look at is Dying Light. And let's go through the settings for Dying Light. So VSync is going to be off. This is highest. This is highest. Uh, view distance increased to the max. Everything else will be on. Uh, and I think that's as high as it goes. 
Yep, that's that's the max we can get here. Oh no, I'm being attacked by someone. All right, and the reason I chose uh, Dying Light is really because it's it's a very recent game. It only came out like, maybe uh, like what a few months ago, 2015. And right now, I don't know if you can see it because I have blood on my uh, screen, but I'm getting like close to 50 frames per second right there. So let me just, uh, this is in the middle of the city too, with all kinds of wind and all kinds of effects and all kinds of stuff going on. And right there, there we go, you can actually can see it. It's at 44, 42, uh, 34, 37. And yeah, it doesn't really fall behind. It, it never, it was never below 35 to be honest. Now, um, if I just run somewhere, just I'm gonna try to run with one hand, see if I can do it without getting killed by zombies. Uh, and here we go. Frame rates per second, 37. And 35. 39. So, and this is on the highest possible settings with everything uh, up to the max, including the viewing distance. So this is really how this card performs with almost every game. And in most games, you'll, you'll basically get over 60 easily and this is one of the last games we're going to take a look at so this is mortal kombat x and look at that continuous 60 fps now this is obviously because uh v-sync is always on in this game and usually you get either 30 or 60 fps but this was one of the more demanding games i've ever played on my previous uh, laptop and it was barely working at all here i'm getting consistently awesome frame rates and the last game I'm going to take a look at is Lords of the Fallen. This is a 2014 game with also, once again, really demanding graphics. And this game to play it on ultra with highest settings is actually relatively uh, challenging. So right now I'm going to actually go into the first area where we get to fight the boss. I mean, just, I'm going to have to use my other hand to try to use my mouse to rotate. Here we go. Uh, this is what we're looking for. Here he is. So let him, let him try to beat us up and let's see it. Let's look at the frame rates there. So 48, consistent 48, uh, 45, 47. So it doesn't get below 40, even with all the mist and all the stuff here, all the action and the light effects and so on and so forth. And let me just get smacked in the face by this guy and let's see how low it gets. And they actually went up, it went to 40, 50. All right, so basically that's that's essentially this uh, uh, this video card in a nutshell and this whole system in a nutshell. So this is a very, very powerful system that can essentially play every modern game, including Witcher 3 that will come out very soon, at easily at least 30 frames per second on, you know, ultra details, everything maxed out. And I actually forgot to show you that this is all maxed out. So here you can see that everything is, uh, it's at 1080p and everything is very, very high. It doesn't actually go higher than that. 16x is the tropic filtering. And uh, actually, why is my vSync enabled? Let's disable. Let's see how if we can get actually higher than that. All right, so even with disable vSync, it actually still stays the same. So anyway, so basically that is the system in a nutshell. This is the gaming card in a nutshell. But before I, I stop this, I wanted to show you something. And what I wanted to show you is right here. This is basically the maximum temperature this card has reached while playing these intensive games. And this is the CPU maximum temperature. So basically, this is what you'll experience if you end up buying this system or something similar to this. Uh, obviously, Clevo 650 series, uh, specifically the one with 980M video card. And maximum CPU temperature was just below 80 degrees. Uh, maximum systems temperature was 73 degrees and maximum GPU was only 69. So you can actually overclock this card and still enjoy relatively low temperatures because usually video cards can go higher than CPU. You can actually go to, you know, like 95, 100 degrees easily. And so essentially that's it in a nutshell. Uh, this right here and this right here is the hard drive temperature, not as important, but obviously hard drive stays very low as well. And mostly because of the design of the system that I showed you before, it's really well designed, really awesome. Um, engineering on their part and i'm really really happy with this pressure so far now if you would like to see something else in the next video let me know we'll post it in the comments below i'm probably going to post the pc mark and other benchmarks uh, including sign uh what is it called sign mark sign bench whatever it's called uh scores in the description as i complete them because they do take a while they take a few hours for the most part so i'm going to post them in the description uh of this video so do read them if you look if you care about the scores all in all definitely a great purchase this is basically the korean version of the laptop called Clevo P650SG, and uh, specifically this is from Hansong. 
So really, my only concern with the system was that it had the, you know, the, the tape inside the uh, laptop that was used to kind of prevent the wires from moving. But I don't really know if this is from hands-on or from Clevo. So that's something I'll have to replace with the mechanical tape so it doesn't melt. And the other concern is obviously that Hansong decided to put a little sticker in there that says that you, you know, if you open the laptop, your, uh, your warranty is void. But since they only provide one year only anyway, for free at least, uh, I don't think that's going to be much of a concern because if the laptop survives for a few weeks, it'll probably survive for a year. And after that, you know, it's, it's just a gamble. Uh, so anywho, so all in all, a really, really good laptop for a really good price. Unfortunately, with Hansong, I'm a little bit, disappointed with their, you know, with the fact that there was tape and that uh, they don't actually allow us to open the laptops. But other than that, it's a really great purchase. So if you're like me and you do like to take risk and open your laptop and replace certain parts without really caring for warranty and you'd just like to take that chance, do give this company a try and also give this laptop a try because it's a great, great, great laptop. So for a gaming laptop for the next two, three years, this is actually the perfect uh, opportunity to purchase something that will last you for even longer than that probably. So even after two years, it will still be able to run certain games at really, really high FPS. And when The Witcher comes out, I'm actually planning to take a look at it and possibly do a few benchmarks to run it at the maximum details and see how, how this computer performs. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been What the Math with the review of Hansong Laptop. Game you later, guys. Bye-bye.